<laughs> Smack it. Every week. I, I don't understand that, but that's for you, not for me. That's there's a there's a defensive lineman on the Jaguars, John Henderson, number ninety eight. This is back in uh, early early two thousands, maybe. Mm-hmm. And he would before a game, before he got he get all his stuff on, before he walked out, he would walk up to somebody and and he would say, "Hit me." He would smack me, you know. And someone would smack him, and he'd be like, and he'd be like, "No, really, fucking." And someone would have to wail on this guy's face, and he'd go. Whoa, yeah, and he'd fucking storm out, and like that's the way he would get pumped up for a game. So, wow, good on you for smacking. Okay, okay, yeah. we're gonna pump ourselves up somehow. Yeah, we we have this sad intro music, and then we're gonna <laughs> surprise you with laughter. You think it's gonna be sad? Boom! Open Funny. hand slap to the face. Yeah, <laughs> I I got into. When I was attending uh, community college for a while, I got into a, I backed into a car uh, right before classes one day and just in the parking lot, you know, busy like that rush, all the students were coming in, backed into a car. And I don't know why I, I, was, I think it was the first accident I'd ever been in and I was just pissed and like people were walking to their cars and from their cars and I, I got out of my truck and I was like, God damn it. Or is this for real? Are you serious? And then I walked over to a stranger and I was like, hit me. (laughs) (laughs) He said that? Yeah, I was just like, punch me in the gut. Like, I I don't, he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) But it was the right answer. He is the the correct thing to say. But man, oh man. Is that true? That's true. That's 100% true. (laughs) Wow. Fuck. You know, we always get down on ourselves like about our mental health and like you should treat yourself better. You're asking strangers to punch you because of an accident. Yeah. And like, yeah, no is the correct answer, right? He could have, you know, you were asking someone, assault me. <laughs> yeah. No, it, 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 he, he did the right thing. I uh, see. Wow, oh, shit. Now that guy had to carry that with him for the rest of the day. He had to go sit <laughs> in a class having just been through that. Oh, fuck me. I can't believe they did that to that guy. I don't think some guy just asked me to punch him. (laughs) I think that would affect me the rest of my life for sure. I just saw him lightly back into a car that was in his blind spot, (laughs) and then he flew out and asked me to punch him. (laughs) Wow, yeah, that is that is wild card stuff that you're getting here. It's not a way to handle an accident. Like I had insurance. I. I, Yeah, totally legal above board. Everything was like I didn't have any drugs or or, or weapons or anything in the vehicle. Like okay. do you simple th- fender bender. Do you think that he is trying to understand the human process now and he's older and he, when something happens and someone's frustrated, he's just like, do, do, do you want me to hit you? I mean, is there just, maybe he thinks that that's like a, a thing that happens or... Possibly. To calm someone down or, you know, I don't know. Or, Straight he, you know he's out. in a situation and he's like, I don't know. I'm all out of ideas. Oh, wait. <laughs> there was this one time years yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. A guy asked me to punch him. Do you want me to try that? Yeah. It's like being lost in the woods and then realizing, oh, I was a, I was a Boy Scout for a little while. I remember, yeah, we yeah. how to tie this knot and get out of here. Hang yourself. <laughs> Wow. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey. Is what? everyone in a good mood? What the fuck is up? <laughs> yeah, give me a punch. <laughs> I think we're all in a good mood. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a great week. Mm-hmm. Lots it's going, going to on, be great. guys. We uh busy show, so let's get into it. Oh, mm-hmm. first of all, mm-hmm. this is Mark Steven and Jeff from Hummies VR Comedy on YouTube. Yes. This is our podcast. You can find us here on the podcast. Hi, how are you? You can find us on YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, all everywhere. You can find us everywhere. Just yeah. look for us. Mm-hmm. You do some work. Help out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you know what? You guys do the podcast right now. Yeah. We're going to sit in silence. You try it. God, I, if, there, if there was a way, <laughs> we may have talked about that. I want to know. I, oh God, I don't know how, how we could do it, but I want to know what like our... our Stere- not stereotype. What it, what is it called? Like our 
people assume like our characters, mm. these, these characters. Yeah. Like how people just, I don't even know the words to use to describe it, but like how we are imagined. Perceived. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Something you want, like you that. You want three guys to do an impression of us? Is that what you want? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And just see what that sounds like. I want to see, uh, yeah, how. <laughs> okay. What people's. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Grab your friends. Tell your mom. Y'all sit. Everyone sit down and try. Give, okay. give us a give us a nice two minute spiel. <laughs> yeah, call in and do your impressions. <laughs> oh my god! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear Five that. one three. It's a hum for you number. Call call that and leave your your best Mark, Stephen, and Jeff impressions. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a, that's five one three four eight six four nine six eight. Leave that yep. impression and also give us some more questions. Happy to answer. Yeah. Life problems, uh, financial advice, uh, relationship advice. We're all giving advice, but it is also not advice. None of it. None of it is. But here's something that is true. This week's idiom. Oh, let's hear some true things. To vomit the sound of weakness. Whoa. To vomit the sound of weakness. What does that mean and what country is it from? Um, that is, that means you, the, the, the biggest weakness is not being heard. And that if, if you don't speak up, you're going to be sick. You're going to make oh. yourself sick. And that is from people that is from people who need to be heard. And it's, sure. it's Canada. I'm going <laughs> to go out there and say it, you know, come on guys. We, we know you got, you got opinions. I feel like this you is, you guys don't um, have to apologize for them. Just <laughs> no. Sorry. Um, I feel like this is like ancient warrior training or something. Like, you know, you're training your guys for battle, right? And you're having them go through these tough guy competitions, right? It's like, I'm going to hit you. And if you yell, you're vomiting the sound of weakness. Mm. Right? Something like mm. that. And like when someone screams out and they shouldn't have. Or something. Mm-hmm. That that ancient Sun Tzu proverb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that. I hit yeah. you and you vomit the sound of weakness. Right. So what is this? What is that? China? Yeah. So I believe so. Let's let's do that. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. And your answers are locked in? <sighs> locked in. Locked in. Final. Okay. Oh, well, I heard the noise. Okay, it's locked in then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To vomit. The sound of weakness means to whine. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. See? So I will give that. I, I, to yep, whine. Yeah, the panel, the panel agrees and they, they're awarding a point to Steven for that one. Wow. Nice. Well done. Yes. Okay. Great. The country is Japan. Oh, fuck. Oh, so close. I was going to say, like a samurai. Oh, fuck, dude. I kind of incepted God. you with the, the Sun Tzu. Yeah, I swear. Uh, I, okay. I it felt honest. I'm not even kidding. It felt like that's where you were going. Yeah, I guess, like yeah, I imagined yeah. you describing like samurai warrior yes. training. Yeah. So you know what? I'm going to give that one to you because I got in there and I messed you up. That's two <sighs> points. Wow. Oh my God. Thank that's you, Stephen. Thank you. Pretty impressive. Wow. Um. I was going to say Japan, and I'm like, you know what? We've never had a Japan quote. Maybe it's not Japan. <laughs> I was like, Go ahead and play the uh, Oscars oh, music. Do you want to do you say anything for your win? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> G.I. Jane 2? Can't wait to see it. <laughs> okay, yeah. <sighs> All right, let's play them off. <laughs> wow. Great. That's impressive. <sighs> Good. Good idiom. Good it, and and so another interesting fact about our list of idioms here, or my list of idioms here. <clears throat> one below. Do you remember when we had the cleaner than an, a frog's armpit one? Yes. Mm-hmm. The idiom right below that to below fart that. higher than your bottom. Wow, interesting. You're on the way there. We almost got there, but your person submitted it. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So it's it's for real. Someone also, I gotta go back, but someone also <sighs> submitted uh, old English sayings too. Um, Ooh, that might be fun. Uh, yeah, I know there's. I know everyone's talking the new English, but you know, you never know how old people are, and you should be able to relate to them. And it came from somewhere. You know, it's good mm-hmm. to know our history. Yeah, not all of it. Some parts suck. Some, yeah. Some, <laughs> some parts out, some parts that are just uh, awful and terrible. But for the most part, let's figure it out, you know? Speaking of figuring it out, <laughs> we did a bonus episode of the podcast. Yes. Mm-hmm. I have not figured out. We, I, we have the, as I also, again, just a reminder. If you see any funky business going on with the podcast, if episodes aren't showing up or they're missing or whatever it may be, I think I just said the same thing twice back to back there. Let me know. But this new this new host doesn't have the super secret hidden way to post like we did the other bonus episodes. So I've got to find a way or place to put those. But the episode that we did was for uh, Fistful of Quarters. King of Kong. King yeah. of Kong. Kong. Fistful mm-hmm. of quarters. And it was all about uh, some real athletes <laughs> breaking records in arcade Donkey Kong. So, And these people are just ravenous for Donkey Kong. And we watched it, and it was interesting. Uh, but it got me. I was like, well, what's the big, what's the big hoopla about, about Donkey Kong? I need to try Donkey Kong. So I did. Really? I was like, am I going to get bit by the Donkey Kong bug? Ooh. Am when, I did you, to... when did you do this? I, th- I think the day after we watched it, honestly. It, uh... Did you stream it? I didn't uh, stream it. On this our is, Twitch this... plug? You, you played Donkey Kong recently. I played Donkey Kong recently. I did too. What? <laughs> Mark? I Guys. swear to God. <laughs> I wish I could join in. I feel so left out. I feel like a nerd oh. for not even playing. I swear to God, I played Donkey Kong on an arcade machine just a few days ago. Mm. Wow. Unbelievable. I think you guys got the bug. I think you guys are going to go for the for the whole fist. Did let me finish. Okay. Oh, okay. Donkey Kong fucking sucks. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. How far did you get? There's my second place. I got to the second board. I, I okay. okay. I, I stuck with it long enough. I was like, okay, let's see. Let's get through the first one and see what's really going on here. Got to the second one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was playing on. I was playing on the Switch. They had like the the Nintendo emulator. Oh, so you know, playing not, in the comfort of your own home. It, Oof. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. I Shots. wasn't touching a greasy joystick. Mm-hmm. Oh you know. come on. <laughs> It's this was this yeah I was in I was sheltered this was a sheltered uh, you've touched a greasy joystick in your own home come on <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable I wow okay Unbe- unreal well you know what I'm gonna have to get out there I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to play the same machine Stephen played and try look, to beat got, his score look I've got a screenshot all right I was with someone. What's your, sent, what's your initial? She sent me uh, the screenshot here. I've got SRB. Yeah. Go to this machine. I got placed third, fourth, and fifth on that machine. Whoa. I, I have it. I will post this shot in Discord. Okay. Okay. All right. By the All way, right. well, I am going to do Donkey Kong, and my initials are going to be T I E. <laughs> and if and and, I, I know that's really inside baseball, everyone's like, "What?" Well, I don't even get it exactly. Yeah, if, Go watch this thing, and if you want to, please watch it with us. Join our Patreon, and you can watch this documentary yep. with us. But if not, I, do yourself a favor: get on YouTube. It's free. King of Kong, Fistful of Quarters. This is it's the most hysterical. It's the best documentary ever. I, um, I, I swear to God, I think it is. I'm not even I, I trying to is. be funny. We'll put it in the extra section on Discord also once we find a. A hidden a place to post it. We'll put yeah. it there. I so it's great, but like they do the documentary does such such an amazing job of vilifying Billy Jack or whatever that guy's name is. 
Billy Mitchell. I can't stand him. Yeah. Yeah. For oh, sure. God. It's it's so fun. It's so fun. Wow. I can't believe you almost got to where I got in Donkey Kong. That's <laughs> wild. What um, board did you make it to? I made it to the first elevators. Yeah. So level nine? I think, that right? that was level, I think it was level four. I think it was four. four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a feat. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I was using my hands. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to say that. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so took me. Okay, I got it. I got yeah. it. I got it. Mm-hmm. It's it's um it's just it's not fun. I, I am I I'm spoiled uh, or or like Yeah, you just I mean, got I done get, playing Elden Ring and then you go to Donkey Kong. Oh, I'm not done with Elden Ring, but like yeah, I, I know what you um well, and like they made those games unnecessarily tedious to make you have to just pump quarter after quarter into the machine. Mm-hmm. Like they weren't made to be good games. games; they were made to be money makers. Uh, one quarter is one play. I think I played like three or four different games. Wow. Okay, I thought yeah. you might have good. played, you know, twenty-ish. Considering you got to warm up, you got to figure it out. But I'm impressed. Yeah, that, that is impressive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what else is impressive, guys? <laughs> yes. Well, that, what? Solar power. Okay. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. What would be? What do you think would be the most impressive way or time to produce solar power during uh, the I would day. Say noon? Yeah. That you'd be the most impressed if you produced solar power oh, while the sun oh, at is night, the of highest. At night. <laughs> oh God! I, I damn, mis- <laughs> misunderstood the question. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you for making me feel like a dumb dickhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're welcome. We both got that one wrong. Yeah, <gasps> um, it would be more impressive. Yeah, uh-huh. at night. At night, leading the witness. Stanford scientists have accomplished this. What? They have produced solar powers. Solar. Powers, solar panels. Oh, that produce solar power at night. That is amazing. How did they do this? Well, don't get too excited. This okay. is another one of those classic. Hey, look, this sounds impossible. Like this sounds almost like the setup to the uh, was it the submarine with the screen door or the helicopter with the ejector seat type oh, yeah. jokes like. A solar panel that works at night. They use this little. Let me get the the the, the word correct. They use it's the difference between in temperature between two materials on this panel. Somehow they're taking that temperature difference at nighttime and creating energy with that. Hmm. But it is such a minuscule amount of power that you would have to have. I mean, just acres and acres and miles and miles uh, of for to make like any you know reasonable amount of power, but they did it. I mean, the the, the technology's there. Technically, they did it, and that's impressive. They did it, and that's impressive, and it's a start. Wow. Well, tell them it's too late because we're uh, we're all gonna die soon. So tell them to stop. <laughs> Tell the scientists to pump the brake and say, hey, this is not the most important thing right now. Really? Yeah, okay. At night. I want to get... <clears throat> we've been thinking about going electric for a while. Not not uh, the panels, but uh, obviously the car. And uh, I looked at some prices and I go, I guess I fucking can't help the earth. <laughs> no, but there's there's some decent used ones. Not Tesla, not the big sexy name. But, you know, you can, you can get a, a good car that's electric. And... Um, but then I go... Well, I think we should get the panels first. I know the panels are probably fucking more expensive than Christ himself. <laughs> <laughs> what's he going for these days? What's his, what's his rate? <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's too expensive to birthday parties. I mean, he still hasn't come back. So I mean, I'm, I'm assuming none of us have enough money. Did you make that up just now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, so but that that's what I want to do is I so we're taught we're I'm I'm very not, I don't have a con- big conspiracy theory but I'm just like I want to go all electric I want to get the panels I want to get the car I want um uh, our food to come from batteries or whatever I don't give a shit so, but I'm 
I guess what we're toying with is, is do we get the car first or the panels? But I would assume maybe the panels on the house would make the most sense because you suck off the sun, then you're then you you take what you've sucked and you blow it in the car. <laughs> Oh, I see. You want to be able to charge your car at home. Yeah, through the solar panels that are sucking the sun. Okay. I would <laughs> I would think you start with the car. Okay. Just just cuz you're 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 already using electricity. I mean, yeah, you're having to buy it to run your house. Mhm. Mm but it's that gas. It's that gas that's the unknown. That's the expensive thing. Yeah, the gas is a motherfucker. We were looking at we were looking at cars before uh, with the last gas debacle, and we were looking at cars because that was it for me. I was like, "Dude, we got to do this thing, right?" And then we looked at I looked at them recently, and they fucking skyrocketed because it's like, "Oh, everyone's fucking in a pinch with gas, so you want to get all on? in the middle of the same debacle that you are, right?" Yeah, now they're like, "You want to get on this electric dick? You're going to have to pay a higher price." So I don't know if uh, we want to do it yet, but we're definitely going to. I think I think that is the next purchase because you're like I said again, ninety eight percent of the time we're doing everything within ten miles of us, right? Anyway, so no, no, no. It's it's I would I want to do it too. Mm -hmm. I want the I want the big uh, battery bank at your house with the solar panels. Yeah. Where you you suck off the sun, and then you get to blow it back at the energy company and sell it to them. What? You're blowing. You have, you have all these bat. You have like a big bank of batteries at your house. So you're working mm -hmm. for the energy company. They're working for you. <laughs> your solar panels charge up these batteries uh -huh. during the day, and then you you have excess you have leftover you can sell it back to them you can pump it back into the grid whoa you can. so then i i get a check from the electric company possibly <laughs> if there's so much it sounds like a scam it sounds that like guy, <laughs> nope nope wait the guy a minute i'm putting the question mark suits on the roof like a pyramid huh <laughs> wait a minute hmm. right right it goes to the top and then me yeah interesting it's a triangle scheme. Okay. It starts from the sun. Well, that's the most toppest energy source. So that yeah, has we're to all be in right. the sun's we're all in the sun's downline. Mm -hmm. okay. It's just a big wow big scheme thing. But you can also hoard it, right? You, like you can choose how you spend yeah, that. You, yeah, you can say, no, I don't want to I want to keep all of this. Mm. Like if you're in, you know, it's it's hurricane season or something and, right. and outages are a possibility you say nah i'm keeping all of this okay all right wow all right you convinced me i'll get the we'll look at a car first and then you know there's there's a couple of decent used ones that we saw that are like i think we can i think we can swing that maybe and then i think if you get the right kind of connection for your car you can use your car as a battery backup for your house like a generator pretty much holy fuck man it's electric. Don't quote me on any of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But I'm pretty certain this is all true. <laughs> that does okay. that does sound like a, a very that, southern thing to do is go to the electric company and be like, listen, my cousin told me about this. <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, does your cousin yeah. work for the electric company? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't quote us on any of this. Ever. I think it might be true. Sums up our whole podcast. Yeah. Except for the Donkey Kong thing. That was a personal experience. I played it and I didn't have fun. Mm -hmm. oh wow okay uh, the documentary did inspire me though quite sure oh absolutely yeah 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 i yeah. was like oh well i mean they're they seem like they're having a great time i mean look mm. at this guy he's on the phone with another guy you know down in florida for hours that's true talking about donkey kong live it was over the phone live streaming mm. before twitch was even around amazing before it was even justin tv wow yeah right Wow. Uh, speaking of. Speaking of that expensive Jesus guy, I just yeah. wanted to give everybody a reminder, a heads up. Easter is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And all the holy days, do you know, there's so many of these, I can't keep any of them straight. You guys ever heard of Maundy Thursday? No. Um, 
I've heard of a manic Monday. Just, yes, we all have, yeah. But there's there's a thing called Maundy Thursday, which is part of Holy Week. But it's, uh, I'm reading, this is directly from Wikipedia. Maundy Thursday, or Holy Thursday, is the day during Holy Week that commemorates the washing of the feet. Okay. You said Maundy Thursday. I thought you're talking about like Monday through Thursday. <laughs> But you're saying this is a day of Holy Week that is for remembering the washing of the feet. Right. And okay. Last Supper. Okay. Oh, but, and all this happened don't, during a week, right? I don't know if this, I mean, I figure you have a big party like that. It's on the weekend. Did they wash their feet before dinner too back then? Or did they do it at dinner? I don't know. Mm. Okay. I don't know. I just, I just want to put this out and make sure everybody is aware that this shit is coming up and it, I don't know what I don't know if you like if you need to get a foot bath for this. Mm. Yeah, what or, do you do? Or if you like you dye your feet like eggs, you get the pause <laughs> egg dye and you uh -huh. dunk your feet in there and you wash that off or something. I don't know. Everybody uh, walks are... around with the the glitter and the sparkles all over their feet for Thursday. Right, yeah, holidays um, are like a big game of telephone. You know, <laughs> it just gets as time goes on, people forget what it's about and it becomes a weird thing. Mm -hmm. Never heard of it. I'm going to go hide these toes in the yard. Come find them. <laughs> yes. And then there's toes sticking up out of the grass. And they go, we found toes. And then they dig up. And it's a, it's a dead body. It's, it's a, a corpse. It's a person under there. It's a corpse. <laughs> the feet out. Oh, you good. You found them. Wow. Oh, I didn't hide I've that one. I've never heard of that. Is this true? It's got to be. Jeff's saying it. Yeah. This is from, yeah, from Wikipedia. And I, okay. uh, then All there's right. there's Easter Tide. Oh, that's that's the beginning of the season of Easter tide. What uh, uh, I think? Are you saying Easter died? Easter tide. I, these are e east. It's it's Easter with T I D E, like tide, tide pods. Mm, okay. okay. Oh, those yummy tide, snacks. Tide gods. Tide. I don't know. Oh, if there's any. Uh, I think Holy we're doing Week a... concludes with Christ's rest and death and descended to Hades. Hey, I thought that was a Greek thing. Also ascended. Wait, can you ascend <laughs> down? I thought ascend is up. His dis and death and descent. Did I say ascend? Maybe descent. Okay, I maybe heard it as ascend. Descent. That's that's Holy Saturday. This that's is how we learn things live, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was his first week being known as Easter week. Okay, so there's there's a lot of stuff going on this coming week, everybody. There, there's wow. Holy Monday, Holy Tuesday. Well, there, these are names are not very original or exciting. There's Palm <laughs> Sunday. Mm -hmm. Passion Sunday, which is the 20... There's Palm Sunday, and there's Foot Thursday or something, <laughs> they're saying? Yeah. What the fuck? That's crazy. <sighs> I did I'm not know all those existed. Wow. There's, is, there, is there Taint Tuesday in there, too? <laughs> Taint Friday. Hey, you don't put that on a Tuesday. You got to have a couple days to repair. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's Spy Wednesday. No, there's not. That's yeah, Spy Wednesday. What is that? I have no idea. Is that when I, Peter spied on <laughs> Jesus? And, sorry, all this is getting kind of <laughs> blasphemy right now. I'm trying to figure it out with you guys right now, though. Was there a spy? Uh, is, One of them yeah. betrayed him. He was a well, spy. It, Judas. Judas was Pontius. Judas. betrayer. Right? Okay. So okay. Good, there's a day good. of spying that happens before Easter. Okay. So. Well, that ha that also happens before before Maundy Thursday. <laughs> spy Spy Wednesday is the day before Maundy Thursday. Okay. You so and in, in uh, modern day, this is one person that happens to know where all the eggs are going to be before uh, the egg hunt. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Right, that's so this, spy. Yeah. You, it's like it's like werewolf. Somebody has that secret spy power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then that rolls into good friday and then straight into holy saturday which i mean you got so that's now you sunday. guys know that's sunday it's holy saturday and sunday they're doing two now this i mean this what a week passion, passion sunday that seems kind of hot mm -hmm. <laughs> like just so a you... good horny section right in the middle of lint yeah yeah give so... it up and then, but the Sunday before that is Mothering Sunday. Wow. See? The most okay. unhorny thing. So you can well, party. Well, depends for on what you're into. A week and a half now is what you're saying. 
I, I, according to this calorie, there's so much overlap. I don't know. Oh, and then there's pancake day. I'm not even, I'm, this is, I'm not making this up at all. In it looks like we miss it, but in March, I think there's Shrove Monday, Shrove Tuesday slash pancake day. Shrove Tuesday is also pancake day. Yeah, it falls on pancake day every year. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> but I know, I know, yeah, there's a day for everything. I mean, I know I did a skit on it, uh, on youtube about a card maker like those those holidays some of those holidays are are real where it's just like well well no i think i think pancake day is not like one of those goof around like oh it's a real like i think this is like a catholic religious oh day. Time. historically and yeah to Relig okay what's his name getting gone um and then there's ash wednesday mm -hmm. we've already hey, passed that you never heard of this yeah ash wednesday you know, oh, oh, okay. Ash Wednesday okay. is big. Yeah, you did grow up Catholic. Okay, so you're just now learning about all this stuff. Dude, this shit is brand new. This okay. Is, <laughs> okay. There's all these hidden days in, your in this month that I had no idea existed. <laughs> well, I'll I I'll side with Jeff with the with the Foot Thursday and the the Peekaboo Wednesday, but the, all, all the others I've heard of. Oculi, yeah. Oculi. That's a Reminiscere. I think I'm pronouncing that the way that I want to. Hmm. Mm -hmm. that i mean there's just a uh, i guess you, you got to be celebrating every day this month it's, it seems like a busy month it's a party mm -hmm. it's a party yes. party month okay. wow party i guess party it up i don't know i don't know what the rules are i'm still learning mm -hmm. still learning very confusing good this is a learning podcast that's fine so uh speak of speaking of learning oh what's up <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> I uh, I I learned some uh, some crazy stuff. Um, How crazy? So crazy! You 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 would you're gonna turn this podcast off, and uh, you'll probably uh, I'll take that bet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I had a gig, and uh, well, I'm not gonna Don't say. Don't say Virginia. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, it was in Virginia. <laughs> what? Yeah. So uh, I've uh, you live there? I live there. I have a second home. Um. Had a had a gig, uh, stand up comedy doing that. I I got there, drove there, two and a half hours. Not not terrible. Uh, for some reason, driving to Virginia isn't bad. From if you're going up, if you're going from the south up, it's fine. I, there's that corridor of like of like it's it's two lanes this way, and then like a bunch of trees, and then two lanes that way, and it's just it's just nice, like just green. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably not a lot of leaves this time of year, but yeah. No, I got you. That's a fine mean. drive. Yeah. Go on. So, I got a gig. I am featuring this weekend. If you don't know comedy, there's a host. He hosts the show. He goes up there and tries to get the crowd warmed up for jokes into a cold room. Does that for about ten minutes. A feature goes on. He does anywhere from twenty to thirty, and depending on what the headliner wants, and then the headliner goes up there and just you know it's a guy who's been doing it for 25 years he's blowing the roof off the place so i go all right i'm gonna get there now you get there's different deals there's different deals with different bookings and this particular deal they said we'll give you a hotel for the night included with the uh with the pay i go okay i'm in so i drive up there and uh it is at the I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll spoil a little bit here. It's at the Timber. It's at the Timberland Motel. Now, ah, yes, Timberland Motel. motel. They now, got you a motel. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil this part. The headliner, it the, this place is such a shit bag that the headliner goes up there when he was on stage, and he goes, he goes. Yeah, they got me at the Timberland Motel, and everyone in the crowd just busts up laughing. It's the funniest thing they ever heard. They're pushing each other out of these chairs. They're throwing food. They're like, I can't oh, believe no. this motherfucker's staying there. It's a real piece of shit, and, and the whole town knows it. It's literally a joke to the point where I was, uh, I was having dinner. I was sitting down having dinner watching the show, and uh, the— waitress there she was like do they really have you guys in the Timberland hotel and i was like yep yeah. and she goes oh my god oh so, no yeah so i but and that that's a little uh fast forward into time so i arrive at the timberland motel i 
I I roll up and this is not good. This is, I mean, if you cheat on your um, spouse, you take her to a hotel and um, you take a hooker to a hotel, and this is the place where you kill that hooker. You know, I mean, this is a bad place. Sex worker. Kill the sex worker. I think it's- sex worker. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm in the 80s. I'm sorry. This, this, I was thinking about the times and the where the when the hotel was built, and back then it was okay to say that and kill them. So. Uh, so I I get in there. I um, said uh, uh, I go up to the counter. I go I, I I'm here for a night, and he goes, "Are you sure?" <laughs> the guy <laughs> working there said that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right, right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they give me a water bottle. It's got my name on it, and that's when you know they're really trying. Where it's like we got to do something. You know the the there's no locks on the door. People are screaming. Babies are crying. Maybe if we put their name on the water bottle, it'll be fine. So I get my water bottle. I check in. It looks like is if uh, your grandma's furniture was in the attic, and that's all that was in there. There's nothing. There's nothing else. It's 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 bad news to the point where I knew I was going to be a one nighter. So all I did was pack a toiletry. I literally carried my toiletry bag out because it's like I'm just going to wake up and throw my clothes on, and I immediately go, you know what, I'm good. <laughs> so. I- so I, I had a couple minutes before the show. I laid down. I tried to catch a snooze or something. Lay down for a minute. I can't. I mean, people are. This is a this is a motel that people are living at. They're not. They're not there for a getaway. And they they are living there between places or whatever an extended stay. Just I mean, I, and I. But right before we got on here, I pulled up a couple of reviews, if I oh, may. No. Um, I, I'll read some. Oh, I'll read ones and fives, okay? Okay. Here's a one star. Stayed weekly. Prices always changed out of nowhere and did not match the price on the sign. Management was rude, not friendly whatsoever. Had attitude every time we asked for anything at all. One star. Here's a five star. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that a, that a review has to go... Listen, a hundred percent written by the management. Right. That's <laughs> oh, oh, you, let me read the rest. I think I think you're re- reading the same review I did. It says, "Listen, the to- the hotel owner has his degree in chemistry. <laughs> Who would know that? Why would a patron know that? <laughs> Sharp man and an intelligent businessman too. This is a family owned hotel. Very nice people." That is so you, I can't even, there's no way around it. To be like, he has his degree in ke- chemistry, he's intelligent, big penis, leave him alone. <laughs> Sharp businessman. How would someone know that? Yeah, okay. Another five-star review. I was really impressed with the rooms and the cheap rate, cable, nice mattresses and pillows, great, AC. No commas. <laughs> just, just a right through that whole sentence. Uh, one out of five. The floor had crumbs. The bathroom smells like sewage. The bottom of the showers are dirty. And while I stayed there for a few days, the staff was absolutely strange and the manager is completely rude. Don't waste your time. Go somewhere else. Also, he does not have his degree in chemistry. No, that's the last <laughs> sentence is bullshit. So anyway, I lay down. I, I go, I go, okay, I'm, I'm like a couple minutes away from the gig. I go to the gig. I show up. And the uh, the guy goes, oh wow, I, I've uh, you're the only comics that showed up. You're the only comic that's showed up so far. And it's like, it's like uh, I usually get there thirty minutes before. It's thirty minutes. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's that's fine. And so the the headliner shows up, and then they one of the the guy goes, hey, our host just got in a car accident, and we have another host that's coming on the way, and we're hoping he can be here. He goes, I go, well, what do you what do you want me to do as the feature? And they go, we want you to do 30 minutes. I go, okay, got it. I'll do 30 minutes. And then he goes, um, if he doesn't show up in time, can you do 45? I was like, uh, you won't and I said, Yeah, I can do I can do 45, but is someone gonna do time before me? And they go, No. You're you're gonna host and feature <coughs> and then you'll pass it off to the headliner. I go, How Huh. How long was the headliner doing? The headliner was going to do 45. So this is a this is it's a weird setup they have. It's a bar 
and restaurant type place, but they have a comedy, a monthly comedy show, and it's set up pretty nice for. I mean, they have bands play there. They got lights. They got a stage. That's all you really need. I mean, I've done a hell of a lot worse. So I just, uh, it's so fun to like share these stories because people often be like, oh, stand up and you're, but you're, you know, nice places that, no, there's so much fucking shit. And not saying this is shit. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Every time someone gives me stage time, I'm grateful for getting on that stage and trying to work new stuff and uh, get better. But uh, so headliners doing 45 to an hour. So you got about an hour and a half show if we're both doing 45, right? So uh, I go, okay, um, you know what might be a good idea because I've been in this situation where you're the first person up and they think that you work there. They think that this is the bus boy trying to be funny. Who gives a shit? Right. So they go up there, the, 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 one of the guys like, oh, no, no, I'll, I'll go up there. I'll introduce you. and But that's it. I go, okay, well, <laughs> here we go. So he goes, he goes up there. Very nice. Everyone's super nice, by the way. And the guy goes up and he goes, uh, all right, um, your first comic is Mark Brady. And he goes, You've, he's got this, that, this. And it's like, you got you to say the name at the last. You say the last, last thing you say is the names so i go mark brady and everyone okay you know so so i start walking up there and no one's clapping and it's like okay <laughs> and then he starts clapping and people are clapping they get the idea and i'm like all right uh and i go i was like it turns out your uh the host got in a car accident so he's dead and then no one laughs i go um that was a joke joke number one just not good you know oh god you're right so i and here's the thing that all people also uh, know is that the host really gets the gets them warmed up and like sets the show up and like starts telling jokes and gets their mind right and then you go okay you're ready for your next comic and then was like all right your next comic you know so the feature spot is really in my opinion the easiest you know De debatable if you know the headliner's obviously got the hardest job because he's got to fucking you know kill it for forty five minutes straight but yeah the feature can fuck around he can be great he can be bad and no one gives a shit because the headliners whatever but uh so i'm up there and I, first joke does okay second joke does good and i'm like all right you know they're, they're on board and then i start going and man it is i am with a wiffle ball bat up there baby i am i'm doing i am trying to work new stuff and i'm like all right this new stuff is not doing the thing like this is not <laughs> it's too new <laughs> and then i realized uh i had an epiphany off off stage but like so I'm, I'm trying trying the new stuff and i go and then i bail i go i'm doing like five minutes of new stuff and it's like getting te teetering so I'm like <laughs> and they're like there's a lot oh. of people in here there's like yeah 80 people in this fucking place and they're all they're having dinner too which is are there everyone's having dinner and you're like ah, god damn it so, so I go, all right, fuck it. I'm going into, I'm going to go do old stuff. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I got to get them on board with something. So I'm like, I'm going to do Tried it. and true stuff. That you right. So, know. I, so I do that, man, not, not really feeling that either. And I go, God damn it. Dude, I'm, oh. <laughs> I got to do 40. Well, he said, he said when I, he said like do 40 ish, do 40 because we didn't know if the other guy would show up and then he'd come up after me or whatever. So we were like, just play it safe and do 40. So I get to a point in my set where I go, I'm going to do this. Like it's, it's, you're almost, you get to a point when you're doing comedy where you can have these <laughs> outer body experiences where you can just be like, I'm, I am doing this and I am, and people see this, but my, my, in my, my soul has gone <laughs> off stage and he's sitting in the stool next, next to me thinking like, what? What else? What else can I do in this situation? So, so your your real self is thinking about what to do, but your mouth and body's on autopilot kind of thing. It's on autopilot. Yeah. Wow. Where I'm just All like right. like I'm doing stuff so old that I could I could do it in my sleep that I could probably almost do it in Spanish, knowing that I don't speak Spanish. So I uh so then I, I get to a point in my set where I go, if they don't laugh at this next joke, I'm going to do this joke that is fucking fail safe. If they don't laugh at this joke, then I am fucked and I just got to eat shit the rest of the show. I do this joke. 
fucking nothing and i go god damn it <laughs> what, was, what was the fail safe joke the fail safe joke well i don't want to say which which one it is because okay. other, other people might be like oh, that joke's okay it's not okay, fail safe okay. but i mean like that's what you go to for a guarantee <laughs> right? yeah exactly <laughs> but uh it gets it gets a decent it gets a decent response i should say but the the part there's a couple parts that it's like you really, you gotta think, you gotta be paying attention, you know, where it's like, I don't like to spoon feed people like every single line. Like I want them to, some of the fun is like letting them come to the conclusion, you know, where it's like you say something and it takes a second and then they put it together. So I do that line and then it gets nothing. And then I go to the, go to, I do the end and it, it does okay. And then I go, wow, fuck. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do everything. Doesn't matter if it's fucking new or old. And then I just started, I, I eventually got him to the point. Now I'm bombing for maybe 12 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes of just a long, this is a long time to get him going, you know? Where in the set is is that 12 to, is that like your first 12 to 15 minutes yes. just straight out of the gate? Well, I would say, I would say the first, the first two minutes I had him on board and then I fucking lost him some way and i think it's because i'm just i'm these new jokes i'm trying out they're not like relationships they're not uh hey you go to the grocery store and it's like oh it's it's like uh i'm just trying new things and they're very sp on specific topics that have been working but they they weren't about that <laughs> life so so i'm probably 20 minutes into my set and the, and that there was 15 16 maybe i'm like just eating shit and then i finally get him going i get him going to the point where the i start uh i start doing some crowd work that starts going good and it's like okay this is this is what you guys need where well, you guys need some engagement you guys need to like it's almost like when i went on autopilot trying to think about shit they're like don't be on autopilot fucking talk to us what what's he eating who the fuck is that how long have you guys been blowing each other you know and you gotta you gotta just say anything and so eventually to the point it was like it ended really good i did 40 minutes but fuck man that was like that was a lot of work i mean to go out of the gate and do 40 and then like slow i'm talking a slow build not just like that's the joke that opened them up now they like me it's just like constant like it was a lot of work anyway i get off uh fucking numb nuts host shows up and he goes oh well, i'll do time and he goes up and <laughs> he does he does okay. Uh and then the headliner goes up, <clears throat> blows the roof off the place. Fucking incredible. And um so anyway, I say all obviously this is a super long story, sorry. Anyway, I'm just like oh. it, it was one of those sets where it was like uh oh also and um so it ended the night the night ended. I I forgot to pitch my stickers. I've been only doing that for like four shows and I was, I was bombing so bad I'm like Fuck this! I'm not pinching shit. And I, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's like, why would I ever be like, hey guys, since you liked all the stuff I just said, <laughs> can I interest you in a sticker? <laughs> so, uh, I, I, uh, the host said something about it, and I go, fuck, I forgot, you know, because <laughs> I, I'd, I'd mentioned to him in the beginning, or the, the, the manager, he was like a, he was like one of the guys running the show that had introduced me. And so he went back on there. He's like, oh, yeah, he's got stuff. And I'm like, don't die shit. So I go back out there. <laughs> and and start I, in your car. Nobody, oh, no, yeah, yeah, no, nobody, nobody comes up except an angel of a person. Bryce, Bryce is a fan of the Hummies. He listens to the pod. He listens. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a Hummies <laughs> fan. He told me to tell you guys to say hi. He comes up. He goes, I'm a fan. And I go, I'm a fan of you. You're the only guy in here. <laughs> <laughs> a friendly face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, don't go anywhere. So we take a picture. We hug. We kiss. And we uh, say goodbye. And uh, sweet guy. Uh, I'm glad I great met kisser? him. Uh, yeah, great kisser. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. If you're oh, listening, yeah. go ahead up, Bryce, for a for, for, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was it was it was so bad to the point where I'm like, and I remember actually he messaged me before the show and he goes, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to that because he was gonna come to the GalaxyCon thing, but he lives in Lynchburg and he goes, I'm in Lynchburg, I'm definitely coming to this." To the oh point yeah, where I said, "Hey, Bryce, don't come to this." Before the show, I said, "This isn't something you want to see," <laughs> but he saw it. He was cool. I was glad to meet him, and um, that was 
that was great, but it was just, it was like, I, I, I was almost like we had sex because I was like, Bryce, this doesn't normally happen, man. I'm, <laughs> you know, this is, I was like, it's not like this, man. Please believe that I've, I've done some good. I'm kind of funny, you know, not what you just saw, but, um, but it ended really good. And I was able to like, not be depressed, but then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> Guy comes up. He goes, oh, it, uh, me and the comics are talking, you know, we're hanging out. Guy comes up and goes, man, you all, I, you all have some balls going up there. And I was like, yeah, especially me. Cause I fucking didn't, I wasn't funny for half the time I was up there. If anyone I'm has very balls, brave. <laughs> balls. So he goes, he goes, yeah, man, you guys are real funny, brave. Like that's the, that's the last thing you want someone to say about you as a comic. <laughs> <laughs> you were brave up there. <laughs> man. You were brave up there. <laughs> that looked hard. <laughs> that looked hard, yeah. Uh, so I go, I go, yeah, I suck. I hate myself. And he goes, no, no, what's your Instagram? And he follows me on Instagram. And he goes, hey, man, I want you to meet somebody. He goes, do you know? I'm not going to say his name. Do you know X? And I go, no. And he goes, oh, man. Like I'm, like I'm a fucking idiot. He goes, oh, man. He goes, my my boy is TikTok famous, man. He is, he, dude. He is. Blo- hey, hey, X, hey, X, and he's he's over. You can see him. He's like hanging. He's like, X, come on over here. Come on over here. X comes over here, right? And he goes, oh, hey. And he goes, man, this 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 boy is so funny, man. X is hilarious. And he goes, he just started his stand up comedy tour. And I go, oh, that's awesome. You're you're a comedian. And he goes, well, <sighs> go. I go, what what you know? I go. He goes, actually, this is the first show I've ever been to. This is the first stand-up show I've ever been to. And I go, but you do, but you do, but, 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 but you do stand-up comedy. You have a tour? And I go, you're, you're like headlining a tour? And he goes, like, yeah. And he goes, I just did my first two stand-up gigs last week. One here and one there. And I go, I am fucking dumbfounded at this point where I'm just like, what do you mean? I go, so this is the first stand-up show you've been to? And he goes, well, I saw Kevin Hart like forever ago one time, but this is like the first really like live in a club experience. And, yeah. So I go, and he goes, I, I have a following on TikTok of 4 million. And I booked these headlining gigs and he show, and he, I, I and the, the other guy pulls out his phone and he's like showing them all these, all these tour dates. This is oh, this has got this is sold out. This is sold out. All this stuff. And I go, wow. And he goes, man, you guys are so funny, man. He goes, I I, I hope I can do that. And I was like, let me get this straight. <laughs> Just so I cannot believe what I'm hearing. So you have a following. You've never done stand up. The first time you've ever done stand up is when you're headlining your own tour. And you hadn't even been to a comedy show before to even like check it out or see what happens. And, and he was like, yeah, no, and he goes, I know it, it's kind of crazy. And I was like, no, it's fucking insane. It's not just crazy. It's ludicrous. The fact that you, someone can have a following and just be like, eh, I'm going to start booking shows and this is what stand up is. But that's the thing. That's how, that's how some of these things are going. I mean, we've talked about this before where it's like, stormy daniels like did comedy and it's like oh you just everyone knows her from how you know her however you know her <laughs> and uh you know i'll be up it's it's almost like these people need a uh they're trying to capitalize and i don't i don't blame the hustle all right that's that's one thing let me get that very clear that if they hey if that's how you can do it fucking do it and kill it but it's almost like these some of these pe- these people on social media don't there's a it's almost like the comedy club is the only thing that makes sense. They can't just go to like a music venue, like a smaller music venue and just right. talk on stage and do a Ted talk or whatever their thing is. So right. it's like, do it, do it. But man, I'll tell you what, after, well, let me, let me ask you, what is yeah. this person? What did they, what kind of content are they producing on TikTok? It's not comedy. Um, you know, I think comedy is subjective. <laughs> so, you, you know, um, and then uh, has a bunch of uh, pictures of, you know, them being hot. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, sure. And you know, what, whatever, dude. I mean, that's that's how you do it. I mean, I, I'll tell you what, though. I'm going to start fucking posting thirst traps of fucking. I'm going to be naked and I'm going to have a fruit basket right where my junk is. And I'm going to post things like never, never quit, you know, and try to be motivational that way. But um, so especially after after the, the gig, um, I go, I, I had this experience, been doing this for eight years. In hindsight, eight years is not a long time. I would say. Uh, Ralphie May quoted it. He said, if you haven't been doing stand-up for eight years, you don't know what the hell you're doing. So eight years is almost like a minimum threshold. I think I got really, uh, um, I think I came out of the gate really funny, and then I had a lot of learning to do. And then I had a lot of struggling years, too, and like a lot of just got the shit beat out of me on a lot of gigs. Um, but, but, dude, I, I drove home. And it was a, it, there was a moment of like, I don't know what made me think of this, but uh, I there's a moment coming home and I go, God, I, I just, I can't believe like this is how I'm spending my time. Obviously, I drove straight home after the gig, by the way. I didn't go back to fucking Timberwoods, Timberland. I didn't go back there. Um, I got home around one, but like I'm driving home and I, I put on, <laughs> I put on, um, Turn the page by um, the cover of Metallica did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, I haven't listened to that song in maybe fifth. Well, I don't want to say how many yeah. years. Yeah, no, get in a very long time. <laughs> yeah, in, in a lot of years. Yeah. That is a reasonable that amount. For, a long you, can say, time. you can say 15 years. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, maybe, but I recently heard it and I was like, oh, yeah, it's a good song. And that motherfucker stayed on repeat. Until I was so depressed and I got <laughs> home. <laughs> I mean, just turn the page. door slams open. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I played that song so, so like, dude, I, at least 15 times, 20 maybe, of just on repeat, didn't play anything else. It's just like the closer I got to Raleigh uh, back home, the the more depressed I got. And just like, and and the next day was bad too, of just like, <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? I have I have everything, you know, with the kids. That's my favorite thing in the world. Well, why am I why am I putting myself through this and in this kind of crap? So, man, I just wanted to share that story with you guys. Well, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Um, I look at it like you were trying to tell stories while people were eating dinner. They were distracted. I don't think. They were really paying attention. They were here to see some guy they knew. Right. Yeah. You were someone they didn't know at all. Yeah. That happens all the time, no matter who you are. Yeah, that's true. I and, mean, like, and, and and that happens including me, like, and but before, I should say, before stand-up, and even still now, I don't give a shit who's hosting. I don't care who's featuring. Let me see the guy I came to see. That's period. It's their show. Right. That's the way it should be treated. Right. And... It's a bonus if the feature is fucking hysterical and the host is good. Like, that's a bonus. But when I go see a show, bring out the guy I want to see. Yeah. Was was Mr. X the headliner there that night? No. Mr. No, X was just not. in the audience. Oh, okay. He was okay, in okay, the okay. audience. Just, yeah, just in the I'm audience. I'm sorry, yeah. Audience. To make no, that no, no, clear. No, no. I think you probably made that clear. I just, I didn't understand it. That is, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I, I get I can underst I can understand the frustration from a comedian's point of view because like the, yeah like they're they, like like Steve O has done it. Mm -hmm. uh, I I went and saw somebody that I like from YouTube. Mary and I went and saw somebody that that uh, who you know who has a very funny YouTube channel at at Charlie Goodnights. It was not a good stand up show. It was mm -hmm. it was a you know a fine time, but like that wasn't stand like they there needs to be a different name for this stuff. Yeah. Like, quit calling it a call, like a stand-up tour. Mm -hmm. Call it something else. Don't call it comedy. Like a, like it does see, it does seem rude to the, the actual comedians. Right. Right. And, and Bryce, if you're listening, you saved 
that night, right? Oh, dude, look, he was, look he, at that. He was an angel. Right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I Just remember. imagine the impact you had there. He probably would have stayed on a rough at the night. Timberwood. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mark could still be in the Timberwoods if it weren't for Bryce. That's right. Maybe. Or Timberlands or whatever the hell it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But um, yeah, you know, it's it's so. Uh, but at the same time, if people see the person that they came to, to see, they're happy. Like, like right. it doesn't have to be amazing. I think, Jeff, you have you know this, you know this, how stand up works. And you're like, it it was it was OK, but it wasn't stand up or like there was a joke every, you know, minute or whatever um might be that type of thing but like but um yeah people are just happy to see the person from the thing and that's they'll leave satisfied and honestly all and it's just the way the industry all they all the the club cares about is are there are there seats if everything's sold out i don't give a shit what's on what's going on stage i mean hype you know in the grand scheme of things of course there's a lot of places that have integrity and things like that and and i'm not and again i'm not knocking them for booking those acts if they're trying to sell tickets it's on a wednesday or even it's on a weekend and they're all sold out or close to selling out they make a lot of money but the fact that it was just like oh yeah just i just skip all the bullshit (laughs) like you guys you had no idea how many gigs i've done gigs for one person Mm -hmm. i've done gigs on a fucking public bus when no one knew (laughs) comedy was supposed to happen and no one wants to listen to you I mean, it's hard to do it in a, in the club setting to begin with, let alone you're, you're out on the street or I'm doing all these. I mean, it's just like you get it. You try to get up at minimum, minimum four or five times a week and try the new ideas and you kick yourself in the head. You're like, ah, it's good. It's not great, though. It's not, you know, it's like you, you hold it to a higher standard and you keep going. And so many things you, you miss, you, you miss people's i mean I'll, I'll never miss my kids birthdays over this shit i don't care how much you pay me i'm not doing that but like you miss birthdays you missed i've missed people's weddings i've missed people's divorces i've missed people's uh parties where they figure out what they're having whatever that is and uh so many nights of like hi ah, all your friends getting together and you're like i can't i can't i gotta i'm booked that weekend i'm doing fucking and it's not a good gig and i've said this before like i would never if someone said and this is this isn't what they pay me, but I say this to a couple of comics. Well, me and this one comic drove an hour, and it was like, um, and it was like, you know, the gig was like, it was fine. Like, let, okay, let's just say hypothetically, it's fifty dollars, which I've done easily. The fact that I, I've done done an hour for free, <laughs> I've just like driven an hour and to do time for free to come back. So let's just hypothetically say I drive an hour, they pay me fifty dollars, and I drive back home. If someone said to me, I might have said this on the podcast before. If someone said to me, hey, come to me, drive an hour, I'll give you $50 and you can drive home, I wouldn't do it. But for some reason, I'll do it if I can also get on stage and for the sole purpose of trying to be better. Because that's the only way this art form works is to, to you need an audience to get better, to try new things, to get stronger. So... God, wow, what a fucking, it's just so crazy to skip all the bullshit. And I was like, this is, this is unbelievable what I'm hearing right now. I see. Yeah. That, that really puts it in perspective. And, uh, that's, that's what soul sucked the soul out of me. Besides, if, if the other, if the gig itself didn't already have my soul being on the side of the stage, like, what else? What else? Well, I, I mean, mean, it's like, yeah, that's a huge reminder that stand up is not easy. Um. Yeah, and you and you hear headline. I mean, I'll listen to a couple podcasts. You hear headliners like, "Oh man, yeah, that's the early Friday show. They fucking I bombed." And you're like, "You fucking bombed? That's crazy." You've been doing this for twenty years. So, um, as as a child who who uh, the same year, both parents did in fact miss my birthday or forgot my birthday. It's not all that bad. It's the most memorable birthday I've ever had. I'll never forget the birthday that both my parents forgot my birthday. Now, granted, a lot of wild fucking shit was going on in the family at right. the time. Oh man! But it stands out. It it's uh it's that's one you don't forget. Can I ask what age? Uh, pff, had to have been twenty. I think. I think uh, like my so like I mean it wasn't like an important like little kid birthday. 
Right. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was probably, or maybe uh, somewhere like around 20 to 22, I think. How did, did you remind them or I got, I got to ask, this is a fucking loaded thing. Do we have time? I'm fine going a bit if you want to save it. Um, it was, no, it was, uh, I think, I think maybe the day after I was like, or maybe like, I was like, oh my so God. what do we like? All right. What's the secret? And they're like, what? For my birthday. And like, as soon as I said birthday, I saw it in my mom's eyes. Like, she's like, I forgot your fucking birthday. Like she realized it like right then I was like, oh, I, I don't hold like <sighs> nothing, no hard feeling. Like, like I said, there was a lot of crazy shit going on in the family. Like, so, you know, and I don't even care about my birthday anyways. Sure. No, I'm, I'm, I'm that way too, where it's like, I don't want to make a big deal. I don't want to thank anyone. So don't give me anything. <laughs> sing, sing a song at me and then make me blow on food. No, I don't want that. You keep that shit. I don't need it. Yeah. Okay. I'm the same way, but man, going to bed at night that night I had to have been like, I was, I was 20, I was guzzling. I, I probably passed out. I did. I didn't go oh, yeah. to bed many nights around that uh, point in my life. I passed out most nights. That's true. Yeah. Just guzzling four locos and just hoping that I <laughs> landed somewhere soft. Who knows? Yeah. So, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. You get over it. Wow. This is, this is confession time on the HVRC hour. <laughs> but the, the, the people doing, doing the, doing the the it's like the the panhandlers like you can't be mad at the panhandlers for making money right yeah the only They're thing yeah the only thing is like if you're not no one's gonna see that show again like if they come back and you're doing the same stuff they're gonna be like okay that's that's it that's his thing you know like you know comics in the 80s they would develop an hour and they'd fucking say that same hour for 20 years and no one cared. Um, and then, you know, now came the time of like a new, uh, the, the, the pinnacle of like a new hour every year, which is fucking insane standard. That That's not normal. Like a new hour should be three or four years in, in my book. But I mean, you have the elite comics doing them every year or every two to three years. So, but, but yeah, I mean, so but like what I was saying is like, so if someone sees a show and like, oh, that was, that was pretty good. Let's say it is pretty good. And they come back the next tour through and they go, oh, they're doing the same thing. Or maybe they a new joke or two or whatever. And then you, they go, okay, that's his thing. And then they don't come back. That's why you always got to kind of right. be turning it over. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, just just all the all the heartache of going and doing it and and learning and driving to open mics. I mean, driving hours to open mics, depending on what city you're in, um, just to get an extra day. You know, it's like, oh, there's not a mic in this city, but if I, you know, if I'm driving an hour and hour and some change to Greensboro, I can get on for four minutes. Like I do, I've done that hundreds of times, where it's just like for free again, for free, so I can try to work this joke, see this thing, and whatever. But to jump all that hard work. I mean, like, if I'm if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, I will be able to do a headline tour. You know what I mean? Like in my lifetime, that's that would be a lucky thing with hard work. But the fact that someone can just jump and be like, "Never done it," I'm gonna go out here and see. I just a part of me, Gosh. a part of me was like, "Dude, I'll go with you. I'll feature for you on all these th- all these shows because you don't. I'll fucking ghost write your shit." I'll Give a little to- credibility in the comedy world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, go up there, do stuff, take notes on him, say, oh, you said this, I think this would be funny, this would add to his shit. I'm not above it, you know? It's fine. Hell no. But wow. Mm, yeah. Okay. Anyway, guys, speaking of... Uh, I feel like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel... I feel like this has been a kick in the gut. <laughs> this... Uh, this uh, Hell no, we learned about Bryce. But, <laughs> yeah, Bryce, sure, maybe. Sure, of course, of course. That shining but, uh, star and God, Lynchburg. Bryce, you have no idea. The Bryce is right, baby. <laughs> How uh, helpful that was. But, uh, yeah. What, uh, is... like, what's your record? Do you ever take notes on, like, uh, how shows go when like people are eating full, heavy meals? 
No, actually, now that you say that, I don't think I've ever. I mean, like in a comedy club, people get like chicken fingers or here and there, but I think for the most part, mo- yeah, people aren't eating. Right, they're just getting uh, a beer or glass of wine or something. Yeah, exactly. So that's a good point. I don't think I've done a dinner show <laughs> before. Yeah. yeah, you're you're your own worst enemy. That's common. So don't don't let it get to you. Oh no, yeah, no, I yes. well, I did, and then I'm over it. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. It it was one of the, and I don't, I typically don't let that stuff doesn't bother me anymore because I just know it's the name of the game. But uh, but for some reason, this is the whole experience, like from from A to Z, was like. <sighs> so you didn't stay the night in this shitty hotel. <laughs> no, I didn't even go back again. I packed a toiletry bag. I packed a toothbrush, and that was it. Okay, you all right? And okay. I I got easy the escape. Yeah. Okay. Did you have to go up to the counter and say, hey, I'm actually checking out early? You did that whole thing? <laughs> I'm going to get an early checkout now. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I just, I, I even made sure. I was like, for a checkout. Because as soon as I was checking in, I was like, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I was, so like, I was what, like, what do I do with the key? And he goes, oh, you can leave it in the room or whatever. If you take it, it's fine. I go. Oh, so you did not, you just fucking left. I didn't you have can to talk to anybody. Yeah. God. Wow. All right. I I would try and avoid that awkward goodbye thing. Great, you can do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that would be very awkward. Like, hey, can I just fucking leave? I hate this place. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's free. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the problem. <laughs> Is it, though? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, glad you're back safe. Thank you. You met some people. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to uh, follow that up. Maybe no, go for it. You just want to go to the uh, the last thing there. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that on the like outside of the episode. Go stuff. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Go ahead with your thing, Stephen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will yeah. be a longer right. episode. It's fine. Okay, fine. It's it's a very jarring transit. Um, speaking of <laughs> turning the page, what if, what if, what? If, Brilliant. Perfect. What if you could turn the page backwards? Whoa, what? Yeah, get ready for science talk. It's happening. Okay. You can do then, that. You can read and backwards. Books books can, yeah. They, do dyslexic oh, people start from the back? I don't know. That's probably a whole other science topic. Yeah, we'll figure it out next week. Okay. And then after the science talk musical cue, then I'll say this. Uh, this is an article that came out. You may have seen this or heard about this. Uh, scientists rewind the clock of human skin cells to make them act 30 years younger. Okay. Wow. I saw this title and Mm -hmm. I was going to do research and then I, I don't know, I fucking forgot, but, um, well, yeah, they act. So the key word in there is act 30 years younger. So what are they wearing? Like rollerblades and. Is this like a saggy old cell wearing like skinny jeans or something? Or yeah, like, just, yeah. Like a yeah. lot of muffin top and some shoes that right. look out of place. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, grandpas wearing hype beast streetwear. Yeah, <laughs> somebody's well, goofy uncle wearing a Supreme shirt <laughs> and Yeezys. <laughs> Supreme wasn't that long ago, right? Huh? Yeah. Oh no, am I out of the loop already? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's still going on a little no, bit. No, it's okay. Look, there, there's still a lot of research to be done, but. Uh, it says, our understanding of aging on a molecular level has progressed over the last decade, giving rise to techniques that allow researchers to measure age-related biological changes in human cells. Um, we are able to apply this experiment uh, to reprogramming your cells, basically. The new method is dubbed maturation phase transient reprogramming. Okay. Whatever that means. Uh <laughs> This process can work in 13 days. Um, It stops before the stem cell state is reached, allowing the cell to retain its original identity and function. There's still, I mean, it's a short article that basically says there's there's a lot more research to be done, but I think they have figured out a way to make human skin cells 30 years younger. Wow. Hell yeah. Wow. So I guess. So 
if uh, I did I, that, I'd, be, I'd disappear. I would be a baby. Yeah. I'm gonna right. Yeah. Start Imagine my pants and pissing in my mouth again. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you looked negative five. You know? <laughs> oh, you're going to have a tail again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine young people on this treatment looking like little semen again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, wow. So this, this, I assume uh, once they do get all the bugs worked out and this is available for people, it'll be affordable and widely made uh, available <laughs> to the masses. This is true. It won't be Who knows? Kept, uh, for only the upper echelon of society. Now, it sounds like something all the celebrities would kill for, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this makes you younger, I think, or makes you live longer. I think this is, from what I understand, this is just. Right now, they're able to make skin look younger or act younger, rather. So there's a lot I more to go. The, the specifics of this acting younger. Yeah, they keep saying that, don't they? Yeah. This. So like, they, it acts younger, meaning like your skin is still 80 years old, but it is there is an elas more elasticity to it. Maybe there's a, maybe it tightens it up a bit, or they're producing the chemicals they need to produce still. Right. And not deteriorating. If you keep so. using that, now I know there's a big debate out there, uh, and I know we talked about the big man in the sky, but is there a point where you keep using this stuff on your skin to where we start getting hunchbacks again and start beating our chests and go, oh, 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 oh. How would that happen? Do you, do you have a... <laughs> Thank God do you, you didn't <laughs> yes and him on that one, Stephen. I had no fucking clue what he was do talking you, about. I'm talking about de-evolution. <laughs> like, do we go backwards? Do we the other? Are we the other side of the shirt? You know how it goes from from monkey. And we, <laughs> the oh, shirt. And right. <laughs> I see the shirt you're talking about. Yeah. The, the monkeys okay. evolving to humans. Okay. And then the and then the person and then we go back down to monkeys again. You know what? Let me just read the whole article. <laughs> I don't I don't think so. No, but it's interesting to see that if this thing uh progresses, you might be able to um yeah, look look younger for longer. Well, um, I'm all for it. I don't ever want to look like <laughs> I mean, when I get to 30, I'm either going to kill myself <laughs> or, you know, I, so that stuff better come out quick because I want to, I don't want to be that. Right. Well, look, I mean, even if it comes, even if it takes 10 years to come out, let's say you're, I don't know, I'm just going to throw out a number. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're 50. Sure. Or whatever, right. Okay. Then you'll look 20. That's fine. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. 60, 30, that's a huge, that's a huge stretch there so oh yeah but the skins are they are they looking or are they just acting younger <sighs> and you gotta rub it all over because if you, yeah. go, you go out there on the beach you got a face I'm, the face of an 18 year old and your body is 63 or if it's yeah, like yeah, streaky I'm no, I'm no scientist I think because they're acting that you might therefore look younger but I think so I'm not sure I don't know is the yeah. short answer yeah. But well, I can't wait to this could not be afford a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this could be a thing happening. So, I'm excited. The future's great. The Everything's looking up future. <laughs> so, yeah. All I'm saying is, you know, don't worry. Look, you might have rough nights sometimes, but things will get better. And and younger. Get better. They're working on Alzheimer's, they're working on all these other things. By the time we get there, you'll you might just be kicking the can down the road. <laughs> you might catch on down to the, uh, the science stuff that happens to keep you living longer. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We're just we're just gonna get by, yeah. and get by again and again. You know? Yeah, everything we will definitely hope. be better, <laughs> or I, we won't, or that, yeah, or that. Okay, and that's your positive note for the week, everybody. <laughs> Things will be better or they won't be. Remember yep. that because it can always change. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and forget everything you've heard because we Except don't know. Except that Bryce is nice. Yes. Never mm -hmm. forget that. Never forget. Yeah, I think we've learned 
tonight that being supportive just goes a huge long way. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, I believe that's going to do it for us. It'll be it. I'm uh, done here now or forever. <laughs> Hold your peace. No. Uh, and if anybody, if anybody knows the owner of uh, the Timberwoods Timberlands, mm-hmm. I would like to see a copy of that chemistry uh, <laughs> diploma. If anybody can get that to us, <laughs> please do. <laughs> I don't know if I believe it. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll mention it on our next podcast. On our segment, we did the research. Okay. <laughs> we got receipts. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>